welcome to the uh, FM Marathon Question Practice. See, I'll just give a quick uh, brief regarding our exam pattern. There are three sections in our exam, section A, section B, and section C. Section C worth two questions and each worth 20 marks. And this section C could be any two questions from investment appraisal module, or it can be any question from working capital management, then any question from financing module, business finance. Business finance. There are other topics in uh, uh, section uh, uh, in FM which are one is business valuation, business valuation. Another topic is risk management. Plus, there are a lot of other theoretical parts. Other theoretical parts. Approximate exam weightage. Approximate exam weightage, 20 marks, 20 marks, 20 marks from these module. See, any of these three, out of these three, any two could be asked in section C. They will be a, a testing in uh, section C. If investment appraisal and working capital being tested in section C, assume if investment appraisal and working capital tested in section C, then the business finance module will be either in section A or B. Definitely around 20 marks will be tested from all of these three key modules. Business valuation, we are expecting a 10 marks and for risk management uh, for 10 marks and other theoretical area like dividend decision, uh, economical factors, business environment, role of a manager, all these four to five theoretical chapters worth around 20 marks. These topics will only be tested in A and B, A and section B. Section A, 15 questions, 15 uh, uh, objective type question, and section B, three questions, each will be having five uh, 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 multiple sorry, objective type question. In total, it will be having will be having 15 questions. So this is an overall uh, uh, exam pattern or exam structure from the uh, topics. Okay, so today we are here not to actually discuss this. As a start, I just mentioned, today we are focusing on this part, business finance. See, from business finance, from business, I will segregate the chapter. Business finance module, total we can expect around 20 marks. The chapters are, one is cost of capital. Cost of capital. This is a highly, very highly important question and uh, the probability of getting a numerical question from this area is very much probable. So today we'll be solving two questions from cost of capital. Another one is uh, uh, source of finance, different sources of finance, source of finance. Next one is capital structure, capital structure topics, capital structure theory, structure. Uh, everyone, please try to don't write in the uh, uh, screen. Okay, you have the opportunity to annotate in the screen, but uh, please don't do that for our smooth conduct conduction of this live session. If you are not able to, if you are not able to follow anything, you can ask the doubts in the chat box. Okay, I kept. Uh, uh, I I am not allowing you guys to unmute yourselves. Why? Because definitely due to the number volume is 100 plus students in the, attending the live session. Definitely uh, a few people uh, without knowing they, they will be unmuting this uh, audio and definitely that will be in hiccups in between the session. So I kept uh, uh, your, the, uh, I, I didn't allow you guys to unmute yourselves. In case if you are uh, uh, stuck with any topic, you can chat in boss. Even after also you are not able to convey the message, I will help you one by one through uh, unmuting. Okay. Yeah. So these are the key chapters that's going to be tested from business finance plus one chapter named dividend decision is also can be a part of question, a sub question of these decisions. Cost of capital, it is a calculation of VAC. We are considering that uh, topic first. See, I already shared this file with you in the group. If you have this, please take this. This is going to be very, really helpful. See, cost of capital, the very important concept to be learned, the very important concept to be learned. See, 
a company require as in this our company a company require good amount of finance to support the investment to support the investment the company has to find fund they have to find finance the key uh, sources of finance are the key source of finance equity now other source of finance is preference now the one is debt these are the three key source of finance so company could either raise finance through equity company could finance through preference company could finance through debt so the investors the investors provide the investors provide fund to the company the organization has to pro give them some returns the organization has to give return to the investors like equity investor preference holder debt holders so cost of capital cost of capital for the company it is the cost cost of capital is the cost incurred for funds raise cost of capital is the cost incurred for the funds raised for who for the company for the company but most of the case the tricky examiner doesn't say it is the cost it is the cost see in the view point of in the view point of this investors it is their expected rate of return their expected rate of return this is also named as expected yield please do learn this term this otherwise this is going to be a confusing topic see most of the case examiner doesn't directly ask to calculate calculate cost of capital or doesn't say calculate cost of equity they will say examiner most of the case calculate the expected rate of return of equity holder or calculate the yield of debt holder from the view point of the company it is cost but from the view point of the uh, investor it is the expected rate of return so we are going to calculate from the calculation point of view we are doing from the view point of the investor we are calculating listen carefully we are calculating expected rate of return of investor and we are saying if the investor is getting if the investor is getting a 10 percent is return assume ex equity investor is getting a 10 percent is return we are as uh, the same will be the cost of the company are you able to follow could you please respond are you able to follow see we are we are just defining the cost of capital from the view point of the company it is a cost incurred for the funds borrowed but from the view point of the investor it is the their expected yield expected rate of return most of the case examiner doesn't ask to calculate the cost the examiner will ask to calculate the yield the yield is assumed to be cost okay so in our exam question the final question is to calculate the weighted average weighted average cost of capital weighted average cost of capital the exam the final requirement will be to calculate weighted average cost of capital and in short form it is said to be vac in order to get the vac we have to calculate the expected yield of equity holder expected yield of equity holder it is also named as from the view point of the company it is named as cost of equity we need to calculate the yield rate of return of preference shareholder from the view point of company it is said to be cost of preference similarly we need to calculate the yield of similarly we need to calculate the yield of debt holders as well debt holders as well in other words from the view point of company it is said to be cost of capital so first we will be calculating these three and we take the weight we will be taking the weighted average of these three to in order to get the back okay now i will be showing you some formulas please quickly go through these formulas these formulas has to be learned there are some conceptual way to reach at these formulas we need to check whether the insurance are in this i'll give you a, a simple thing there are only three types of financial instruments equity preference debt these can be either redeemable redeemable means they will be saving saving some uh, uh, years uh, preference shares will be redeemed after 3 years debt holders will be redeemed after 3 years if at all it's a redeemable instrument you need to calculate the expected rate of return of investors using irr formula 
See, we are calculating from the viewpoint of investor. Investors expect a rate of return. We will calculate using IRR formula. If all the instruments are irredeemable, we'll be using the concept of perpetuity. See, what is mean by what is mean by irredeemable? Irredeemable means if an investor invests today, they will be having the opportunity to get the returns for an infinite period. In the wise investor, that infinite period or a wise return, the opportunity in the in all that is irredeemable. Irredeemable instruments are. The investor will be having an opportunity get to re return for a not defined period. So these are the formulas to be learned. Since this is a question practice session, not an uh, uh, lecture session, not usual lecture session. See, our usual lectures lecture session will be having around four to five hours simply discussing these formula. How these formula derive? At this point, since we are at the last days days of our exams. At least you have to go through the formula and try to buy hard these at least. Okay, so these are the functions of formulas to be learned. Please quickly go through this. I'll give you one or two minutes. Please go through this. Okay. See, KE. If I told the instrument is ready irredeemable, KE is always irredeemable. If you are an investor, if you are an investor and investing money in equity shares. If you are an investor and you are going to invest in equity shares, your money will be uh, returned only at the time of liquidation. So, by contractual, by contract itself, or by nature itself, equity is irredeemable. Equity is irredeemable. Examiner doesn't say equity is irredeemable. For preference shares and debt, they will be redeemable and irredeemable. So for irredeemable, it's a perpetuity concept. K is equal to V zero into one plus G divided by share price whole plus G. K D interest into one minus T divided by P zero. K P D zero by P zero. If at all the instruments are redeemable, only two instruments will be redeemable. Debt and preference shares will be using IRR concept. Having said this, super quick, we are going to practice a question named Corfey. This is a March June two thousand nineteen question. See, there are three questions I am planning to solve today. Other two questions will be uh, solving in CBE practice platform. This is a, a 2019 question, so uh, it's not available in CBE pack platform. It's available in Kaplan exam kit. Plus, I already shared a file with you. I already shared a file with you uh, in the group. Please do take that. Please do take that file. Uh, where it is? Yeah, here it is. See, since this is a uh, uh, screenshot uh, of the questions, we cannot uh, vote copy paste from this file. Okay, so this is the coffee question. This question start from here. It's a past exam question from March June two thousand nineteen. March June two thousand nineteen. So these these are the data. Okay, so balance sheet is given. Some other data is also here. Additional figures are here. So we are going to solve question A. In exam question, you should read first word scenario or requirement. Please do respond. Which one you should uh, uh, read first, the scenario or the requirement? You should start with reading requirement. Excellent, excellent. Everyone know that. That's an one exam strategy. So that. We will get to know what is our objective, what is examiner's requirement. Then after knowing that, we will be reading the scenario. Great. So first question, highlight like this. Calculate the weighted average cost of capital on a market value basis. So question A consists only one question, just calculation. But it is worth 11 marks. 11 marks. Question B is discuss. The views expressed by the three directors on how the investment should be financed. See, for question B, this is the this is the scenario. Uh, uh, what we we should read here? Director A said something. Director B said something. Director C said something. Okay. So for question A, till this scenario, till this is required for solving question A. So take a few minutes. Please do read the scenario. Without knowing the scenario, we won't be able to solve this question. So please, I'll give you a three to five minutes. 
to read till this point to read till this point and be ready with a spreadsheet be ready with a spreadsheet to solve this corfe question okay so please go through the question i'll wait for two uh, three to five minutes once you're done reading do come in then once you are reading the scenario to let me know do come in then i'll wait let's do this let's do this boys and girls let's do this let's start practice this question see for an, uh, a typical cost of capital question like this the examiner might provide you with the balance sheet sofp so look at the equities and liability side this is the equities and liability side from this we will create a plot for our answering from this data we can create a plot definitely there will be equity finance without equity finance there won't be any company at least there should be one shareholder for a company so definitely the company will be financed with an equity finance apart from this the company is financed with preference shares company has some loan notes it's a debt it's a debt instrument plus company has some bank loans also it's also a debt bank loans are non tradable debt bank loans are non tradable debt loan notes are another name for bond debentures it's a collective name for bond and debenture so there are four sources of finance for this company there are four sources of finance definitely equity will be there plus the company took some preference shares the company issued some uh, loan notes plus bank loan so there are four sources of finance so that our uh, answer plot for this question will be a uh, i need to calculate ke since there is equity finance we have to calculate kp since there is preference shares we need to calculate kd of loan note loan note plus we need to calculate kd of bank loan this will be our plot this will be our plot for calculating initial calculation for ke kp kd and a uh, kd bank loan plus in order to take the weightage in order to take the weightage we need market value of equity ve stands for market value of equity vp stands for market value of preference vd of loan note stands for stands for market value of debt of loan note and vd of bank loan okay super this is our plot we'll be finding out some figures here we'll be finding out figures here we'll be finding out all these figures first we'll calculate ke and ve then we'll calculate kp and vp then we'll go to kd vd kd vd after getting all these components then we'll be able to find out that so this should be our plot after reading the scenario you should create and format like this in section c cd platform as i mentioned for next two questions we'll be solving in the cb platform but since this is a 2019 question it's not available in the cb i'm using spreadsheet okay great so hope you guys then done, done this plot and see examiner for a typical question like this most of the case he will be creating a separate information for each of the source of finance this first paragraph this is about which source of finance equity preference debt please do read this and let me know this paragraph is for which source of finance which source of finance is it equity debt or preference it is the details for equity plus here you can see this is the details for preference this is the detail for uh, loan note and this is the detail for bank loan so whenever you solve each one you should focus only, only on these paragraph careful reading is an important uh, vital part important part for our success of exam papers okay having said this looking at the data for the ordinary shares see a few data are given here plus few data are given here as well risk free rate beta are given see i in in, in the initial sessions i uh, already projected you this pdf file this uh, uh, slide 
here k is said to be k is equal to this is based on dividend dividend into current dividend into 1 plus g divided by ke minus g this we will be using if the examiner provides hints about dividend sorry the formula is p0 minus g my mistake uh, i wrote it for p0 i wrote it wrong wrong formula once again k is equal to d0 into 1 plus g divided by p0 whole plus g this formula will be using to solve ke if dividend information about dividend information about growth information about share price and all given but in our syllabus there are two models there are two models for calculating ke for afm level it is three model for afm level it is three model for fm level it is two model one is dividend growth model for calculation ke number one is dividend growth model that is uh, this formula dividend growth model plus we have another model if you re do remember it is capm capital asset pricing model examiner doesn't say which has to be used if dividend data growth data is given we have to go with uh, uh, dividend growth model if risk free rate uh, premium risk premium data data given we should follow which method if anyone knows please do comment if rf data risk premium if all these are given we should go with what we should go with what capm so here here the capm formula i'll write once uh, i'll write the capm formula it's in, in, in the end of this slide in capm k is equal to rf plus equity beta there are two betas equity beta and beta asset we should use equity beta rf plus beta equity into risk premium risk premium okay rf plus beta equity into risk premium if risk premium is not directly given if risk premium is not directly given they will be provided with market rate of return rm minus rf you have to do this rm minus rf if risk premium is not directly given we have to use rm minus rf okay so having said this looking at this data we can confirm that there is no hint about uh, growth and all but examiner is provided with risk free rate examiner is provided with risk premium and equity beta is given it itself says we need to solve which method for equity which method we have to solve which method we have to solve if anyone knows please do comment i want your participation that says we have to use capm formula excellent excellent so i'll start a working note for equity please do please do together please do follow me i'm going to solve equity in order to solve for equity we require rf we require equity beta plus we require risk premium all these are readily given in the question risk free rate risk free rate it is 3.5 percentage risk free rate is 3.5 percentage so i'll write 0 0.035 either you can type 3.5 percentage better to keep it in decimals 0 0.035 3.5 percentage equity beta it's also given equity beta is also given the equity beta of the organization is 1.25 here it is 1.25 equity beta is 1.25 and risk premium if risk premium is not directly given we have to do rm minus rf but this question directly the examiner provided with directly provided with the uh, uh, risk free uh, sorry risk premium what's the risk premium could you please pick from the question let me check are you able to follow or not do pick risk premium from the question ella or risk premium pick it do pick risk premium from the question it said 6.8 percentage here it's risk premium 6.8 percentage So I'll read six point eight point zero six eight. 
6.8% means 0 0.068. So I have the ingredients, I have the components to calculate KE. I have the ingredients to calculate KE. So KE is equal to RF plus in brackets beta equity into risk premium. This is the uh, formula I have to solve. Okay. Hope everyone knows this formula. Is K is equal to R plus beta in brackets beta equity into risk premium. So K is equal to R of I'll you we should link, we should link to the cells. Instead of solving the calculator and inputting the answer, we should link uh, in our CB spreadsheet. So R of plus in brackets, R of plus in brackets. Beta equity into risk premium. Beta equity into risk premium. This is how we will get KE. RF plus beta equity into risk premium. Done. So 0 0.12 means 12 percentage. After solving all these, I'll, I'll make it into percentage. We can keep it in decimals also. We won't lose any marks. But for the percentage presentation, if we have time, we could change it into percentages. Okay. See, we'll be solving like this only. I'll find out KE, then I'll go for VE. Market value. We require market values of equity and all. Okay. See, any of these instruments, any of these instruments, market value will calculate using a formula. Number of instruments, that means in case of shares, it is number of shares, multiply by their market price, price of one share. Number of shares multiplied by price per share this is how we will be getting value of equity plus value of preference again number of shares multiplied by price per share value of debt of loan note instead of number of shares it will be number of bonds bonds or debentures whatever it is number of bonds multiplied by price per bond price per bond this is the formula we have to solve for cal we, we have to solve in order to get ve now how to get number of shares or number of votes? How to get the initial number of shares or number of votes? Please do listen everyone carefully. Many of the students are not able to find out this from question. This is very superb, easy. See, I'll, I'll erase a few figures in order to uh, get attention to the data. There are a lot of scribbling, so I removed everything. See, this is the ordinary share capital value. This is preference share capital value. This is bank loan note value. Sorry, loan note value. Is this values or numbers? These are in values, dollars. These are not numbers. In order to make it to numbers, we will divide this value with their par value. Divided with their par value. Divided with their par value. Okay. This is how we will get number of shares. Number of shares or number of votes. So, from the question, you can see that the ordinary shares of Corve company have a par value or nominal value of $1. So, 15 million divided by 1. Par value is 1, we will get 15 million number of shares. We got 15 million number of shares. So here value of equity is equal to 15 million divided by 1. Is this value or numbers now? 15 million divided by 1. That 15 divided by 1. Is this value or numbers now? Do comment. Do comment. Is this numbers or value now? Please do respond. It is, it is numbers now. So we have in total 15 divided by 1, in total 15 million number of shares. We need to know the total market value of equity. So number of shares will be will have to be multiplied with price per share. What is the current market price per share? The market price per share is 6.1. So market price per share is equal to number of shares multiplied by 6.1. This is how we will get value of equity. This is how we will get value of equity. So value of equity is equal to 91.5. I'll, I'll, I'll solve once again. 
15 million was the capital value in books divided by its par value. Now it is number of shares. And each of the share is worth uh, 6.1. So in total, it is 91.5. So we solve for KE and VE. Similarly, we'll be doing KP and VP. Before that, please do let me know. Once you've done with these points, please do let me know. Done. I'm, I'm just waiting for uh, 30 seconds to one minute. If at all anyone is not able to follow or not completed yet till this point, I'm waiting for a 30 seconds. Please complete quickly. And in case if you have any doubts, please do ask. Solve for equity. Next, we will go for preference shares. While we solving preference shares, our focus is only to these preference shares, preference shares. Okay, read six percentage preference shares. See these percentage before preference shares are there fixed dividend. These six percentage, the percentage just said before the preference shares is their fixed dividend. Always, 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 listen carefully, always, 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 the preference dividend should be calculated on their par value, the dividend of preference shares and coupon interest of debt instrument, preference shares dividend and coupon interest of debt instrument has to be calculated on par value of their par value of their par value, okay? So, here, what is the par value of preference shares? The 6% is preference shares of Corfe have a nominal value of 0.75. So, the preference dividend will be preference dividend per share is equal to the par value of the share is 0.75. On this value, 6% they will get as preference dividend. Aftab, please don't write in the screen. You are writing the second time. Please don't do this. So 0.75 into 6%. This is the preference dividend. Okay. Do let me know after reading these paragraphs for preference share. Look at here and this point. Do they mention any year for redemption? Do come in yes or no. Do they mention any uh, year for uh, redemption? Do come in yes or no. Yes, Russia, you could use both scientific and normal calculator in CV exam, but most of the examiner will uh, the, the examiner will only allow to use only one calculator at a time. Okay. See, is there any uh, years mentioned for redemption? No. See, if it on years doesn't mention, that means the instrument is redeemable or irredeemable. Do comment. If years doesn't mention, then the instrument is redeemable or irredeemable. Do, do comment. It is irredeemable, right? Irredeemable. So, if at all it's an irredeemable, we have to use this formula. Since it's KP, it's D, D0 by P0. That's a formula. You have to learn this, okay? You have to learn this. As I mentioned earlier, in our normal class session, we will spend good number of hours to learn this formula, not as by heart, to know the concept and learn this. But as at this point, you have to buy it if you doesn't know the concept behind the uh, derivative derivation of this formula. In order to gain marks, in order to gain marks, buy hatting is fine. From this part, okay? Yeah. So we'll be using this formula. In if we told the examiner stated some redemption period, we'll be solving the rate of return, yield, expected rate of return uh, based on IR formula. So We'll be solving for preference shares. I'll write another working note here. Please do practice with me. Please do together. Now I'll open a working note for preference shares. I require D0 and P0. We require D0 and P0 in order to... Naima has a doubt. Sir, nominal value, if they, they doesn't say said... Uh, nominal value, how we could calculate. See, it's not a calculation figure. It is written in the contract. Whenever they issue the first time preference share, it is mandatory to uh, fix their nominal value. So nominal price will be given, definitely given. Nominal value is not always 100. 
nominal value is always 100 only for debt instrument nominal value is always 100 only for tradable debt instruments not for preference not for equity shares preference equity shares uh, nominal val value should be given in the question it will be given definitely okay so we require d0 as i mentioned preference dividends are preference dividends are fixed and that percentage will be given in the question that percentage has to be calculated on their par value their par value we found that it is 0 0.75 75 cents it is 0 0.75 dollar and the fixed percentage of dividend, the fixed percentage of preference dividend is 6 percentage. So 0.75 into 6 percentage. This will be the dividend. This will be the dividend. 0 0.045. 0 0.045. And market price of preference shares are given in that paragraph. The market price of share is 0 0.64. 0 0.64. Now we can easily apply the formula. What was the formula for preference shares? What was the formula for preference shares? If it's an irredeemable instrument, it is equal to D0 by P0. Simple formula. So this is equal to D0 by P0. So we found KP. We found KP. From the order, from the order, please do let me know what we are supposed to calculate now at this point. We calculate KE, then DE, then KP. Now we are supposed to calculate vote. If you are able to follow, please do comment. Next, from our format, from order, this order you should follow in the exams. So we need to calculate VP. What will be the formula? We have to calculate number of preference shares first. We have to calculate the number of preference shares. Then we'll multiply with the market price of 0.64. So how to calculate number of shares as we calculated, as we calculated for equity shares. See how we calculate the number of shares for equity shares, their value divided by their par value, their total value in amounts divided by their par value. Similarly, here 6 divided by the par value. What was the par value for preference shares per share? Nominal value, their par value. What was the nominal value or par value per share? What was that? How much? How much it was? Par value of preference shares. It was 0 0.75, right? It was 0 0.75. So 6 divided by 0 0.75. If you solve till this, you will get number of shares. How many preference shares? And each shares are trading at 0 0.64. So number of shares multiplied by each shares is worth 0 0.64. This is the total value of preference shares. Okay, so this is equal to 6 million divided by 0 0.75 will get number of preference shares. 6 divided by 0 0.75 will get number of preference shares. Multiply by, multiply by the price, market price of each shares. The market price of each shares is 0 0.64 in this question. So this is how we will calculate for value of preference. Value of preference. So we solve for KE, VE, we done with KP, VP. I'm give you, giving you a 30 seconds to complete till this point. In case if you have any doubt till this point, you can ask in the comment box. I'll wait. I'll wait. For KE, VE, KP, VP. In our order, we'll go for KD and VD of loan node. KD and VD of loan node. Now we'll search for the data for that. For our uh, proper visual, I'll, I'll erase a few narratives. Okay. So loan node, they given a data, some data here, plus some data here. Do read once again these data regarding loan node. Okay, is, is this from the question, please do let me know the first formula for the KD or the second formula for the KD, which we are going to use the first formula or the second formula. Book value, nominal value, par value are same earlier. Yeah. See from the scenario, you can see that you can see that it's a redeemable in five years. It's a redeemable. 
If no years are mentioned, we will go for with this formula, irredeemable. Since it's uh, uh, years mentioned, we will calculate IRR. Hello. What we are trying to calculate, we are trying to calculate cost of capital of the company. But the numericals are sold, numerical are done from the viewpoint of not the company. We are solving the numerical from the viewpoint of investor. We are calculating the rate of return. IRR stands for internal rate of return. We are calculating the return of the investor. And we will say, if the investor are getting this much return, the same return is company's cost of calculation. What See, if in the start I said, what is cost of capital? It is the cost to the company. Cost to the company. In other words, it is the dash of investors. Please do uh, complete it. For company, it is cost, but it is the dash from the viewpoint of investor. What it is? Expert rate of return. Most of the case, instead of rate of return, the examiner used this term, yield, yield, yield. Learn it, learn it. Okay. So since it's uh, uh, redeemable, we have to go with IRR formula. So I'll go for loan note, working note now. Loan note. Please do, please do follow me. Loan note. Yeah. For so loan note to calculate uh, uh, IRR, we should create a plot for each year's cash flow. T0, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. These are the five periods. These are the five periods. In order to know the rate of return, we require cash flows. Cash flows. From the viewpoint of whom? See, we are calculating cost of capital, but from the viewpoint of whom? Once again, please do come in. Is it viewpoint from the viewpoint of the company or from the viewpoint of investor? From the investor. So I need to know the cash flow pattern of the investor. Okay. Investor. See, investor should invest. Investor should invest. Today. P0 means today. Investor should invest in the market. The par value or market price. If you are buying a share, if you are buying a debenture, you have to invest the par value or the market price. It has to be what? It has to be the market price of the instrument. So search for the market price in the question. Market price is 103.5. Par value of bold. Par value of bold is 100. If this is not mentioned, then also we have to assume for loan note, not bank loan, for loan note, bond, debenture, that means tradable debt. For tradable debt, it is always, par value is always 100, not for shares, not for preference share or not for equity shares. For tradable debt like bond, debenture and all, if question doesn't give you a specific par value, it is assumed to be 100. Okay, an investor has to invest 103.5. The common mistake here is, Investment means is it, it has to be a positive cash flow or a negative cash flow. It has to be a positive cash flow or a negative cash flow. Please do respond. It has to be a negative cash flow. If you didn't provide that negative cash flow, your IRR formula is not going to work. Be careful. This is a common error from my 14 years of teaching experience for this paper. 14 years of teaching, I I'll, I'll spent a lot of time, many students forgot to put negative sign for this investment. It's an investment for the investor, it's an outflow. So, if, if the investor invests this much money, every year they will get coupon interest. Every year they will get coupon interest. But for that coupon interest, they have to pay some tax. They have to pay some tax. What's the percentage of tax? 20% tax. So that means whatever income they receive, whatever income they receive, 20% will be gone as tax. So after tax, what will be the percentage of income they are getting? After tax, what will be the percentage the investor are getting? After paying that 20%, what will be the post-tax, after-tax percentage of uh, income? If income is X, we pay 20%, what is left? What percentages of income is left? 
it is 80 percent is right so every year the investor will get a coupon interest but out of that they will have to pay 20 percent tax so rest they will get only as shown with 80 percentage this figure coupon interest into 80 percentage this will be the every year's income plus last year last year they will be guaranteed with a redemption value so this is the cash flow we have to input here from t1 to t5 coupon interest as mentioned for preference share as mentioned for preference shares coupon interest is the fixed interest fixed percentage this has to be coupon interest has to be calculated on percentage of par value or percentage of market value do comment this percentage has to be coupon interest has to be on the on which value par value or market value which value do comment my dear students let's give our best let's put our best to gain marks to solve the afm exams it's always always it's always always preference shares dividend percentage and coupon interest of low note has to be on their par value it has to be on their par value if question doesn't say is any par value for debentures it is always 100 so this is equal to uh, this is equal to uh, this is equal to 100 is the par value multiply by on 100 they are assured with a percentage of 8 percentage that means 8 100 into 8 percentage that means 8 this will be the coupon interest for every year 8 dollar 8 dollar but out of this they have to pay 20 percentage tax so rest we are only getting 80 percentage net of tax we are only getting 80 percentage so this is the coupon interest this coupon 6.4 net of tax 6.4 will be getting for next four more years so 6.4 every year will get it plus last year copy paste this figure plus last year we will be guaranteed with redemption value so what is the redemption value the question see can be a redemption par or premium in this question it is redeemable in five years time at a 10 percentage premium to their nominal value what is nominal value 100 plus they will get a premium of 10 percentage of this 100 that means they will get 110 100 plus 10 percent is more 100 plus 10 percent is more so we have to add 110 here we have to add you can use this formula bar you can use this formula bar since we are adding the 100 at the last at the end of the formula no need of bracket if you are doing some plus in between you have to input the bracket since we are doing at the end of the formula no need for the bracket it will be 110 so this is the cash flow float we have to create for bond instruments, debt instruments, if they are redeemable, if they are redeemable. Do delete this and try once again. Delete this and try once again, once again. I need to solve your cells. I'll give you one minute. After doing this, do comment them. One more time, do that. I'll wait. Hope you guys done uh, these figures. From the investor's viewpoint, the investor has to invest 103 today and they are guaranteed with this much returns. So, what is the rate of return inside this investment? Inside this investment, what is the rate of return? That is actually calculated by IRR, internal, internal means inside, rate of return. So, what is the rate of return? There is a formula in spreadsheet to solve that equal to I R R equal to I R R bracket open select the cash flows from T0 to T last hold the shift key press the arrow mark key you can select it hold the shift key and press uh, arrow mark key right hand arrow key you can select the right hand side so close the back bracket so spreadsheet will provide with the inside return. What is the rate of return inside this investment? If you are investing 103.5 and you are getting 6.4 every year, what will be the rate of return? It is 7 percentage. It's not exactly 7. If you have enough time, you could round it off to two decimals. It is 7.27. 
If you kept like this also, you'll get full mark. You'll definitely you'll get full marks. But uh, for the presentation and for the discussions, I'll keep it as in two decimals. So we done KE, KP, KD using this IRR formula. With our order, next will be our value of debt. From the previous examples, I, I help you to solve for VE, VP. Similarly, could you please try for VD? Do try for this figure. Do try this figure. And do comment that after that solving VD. I'm giving an opportunity to practice. Practice. Try that VD. I'll wait. Yes, sir. So we don't need to calculate using interpolation method. No. In section C questions, we have a spreadsheet formula. So that we can easily use it for IRR calculation. But if it comes in section A or B objective type question, they will be giving you some positive NP and negative NP. Using that, we have to use that interpolation formula. IRR is equal to the was an epic formula. Lower rate plus NPV of lower divided by NPV of lower minus NPV of higher into higher rate minus lower rate. Leave that formula, learn it. Okay. Try to solve the figure for BD. And after solving this, please do come and done. Okay. Similar to the other instruments, first of all, we need to calculate the number of bones. Number of bones will be their capital value, their capital value divided by their par value. Tradable debts par value is always how much? Tradable debts par value is always how much? It is 100. So 8 divided by 100, we will get how many millions of number of bones? How many? 8 is 8 million. So 8 million divided by 100, you will get 0 0.008 million. That much numbers has been issued by the company. And each is trading. market In market, it is trading here 103.5. So multiply by 103.5. So this is equal to 8 million divided by 103.5. Sorry, my mistake. 8 million divided by 100. 8 million divided by 100. This is how we get number of bones. And each bones is trading at 103.5. Okay, great. So this is the value of them. Value of them. Now super cute for the bank loan. Hello, super cute for the bank loan. Listen, 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 listen. Okay, super cute for the bank loan. See, bank loans are tradable or non-tradable. Dependents could be trade in the stock market. Bank loans, is it? Tradable or non-tradable? Bank loans are tradable or non-tradable. They are non-tradable. So they don't have a market value. They don't have a market value. Since they don't have a market value, their book value, their book value is deemed to be market value. Their book value of 5 million is deemed to be book value. That's it for the VD of bank loan. Plus, if Percentage of the bank loan is given. We took a loan for a rate of 7%. If this is given, for adjusting for the net of tax, we'll just take 80% for doing that 1 minus T after tax. So KD is equal to bank loan interest multiplied by 1 minus T. Bank loan interest multiplied by 1 minus T. But here the bank loan is variable interest rate. No uh, uh, interest is given for bank loan. So only way to solve this question, we are assuming these are debt of the same company, right? Loan note and bank loan is debt instrument of the company. So we can assume that from the risk analysis, equity is the highest risk. Comparatively, next will be preference, then it will be debt. So I'm assuming this is the same company. If we have an uh, uh, cost of capital of 7.274 loan note, I can assume that the same is applicable for bank loan since there is no other data is provided for bank loan. Since there is no data is provided for bank loan, it is assumed that the same KD is applicable for bank, uh, uh, bank loan. Otherwise, some percentage of the bank loan will be given. We have to just percentage multiply by 1 minus T. Are you able to follow? Are you able to follow? Do respond. Ha, ha. Yeah, great, great. Let's continue. So we are done, almost done with the 
a big question of VAT. We need to calculate the components. Next part is so easy. There is a shortcut in Excel to calculate VAT. Just do learn the formula what I am showing you. There is no time to explain the concept behind that formula. See, for the VAT, previously we have to do a, a big formula like VAT is equal to KE into weightage of V equity VE divided by VE plus VP plus VD of the first plus VD of the second. Plus, next we'll go for KP. KP into VPY total VE plus VP plus VD plus VD plus. This has to be done for other two finance as well. This is going to be time consuming. In order to save time, there is a super cute method. The method is, the method is, I'll show you. We will multiply KE into VE. KE will be multiplied with VE. That means 0 0.12 will be multiplied with 91.5. Then KP will be multiplied with VP. Then KD will be multiplied with VD. Again, KD will be multiplied with VD. This is, we have to solve first. Okay. So we have to do only once. This is equal to in the next column, please do follow me. Please do follow me. KE, uh, since it's written here, I can't select it. I'll delete deleted it. So equal to KE into VE. Just do this. See, this is not the time to explain the concept behind this formula. Just follow me. In my normal session, definitely I, I don't continue without saying the concept of this formula. For exam marks, just follow this. K into V E. Just copy paste. That's it. Just copy paste. Just copy paste. That means this is K P into V P. This is uh, K D into V D, and this is K D into V D. In order to get back, just take the sum of sum of these two columns. In order to get the back, just take the sum of these two columns. So equal to sum of all capital equal to sum of all capital. This is actually that VE plus VP plus VD plus VD. In the formula, this is the denominator. You can see, you can see this denominator, this denominator, VE plus VP plus VD, VE plus VP plus VD. This is the denominator. So if I keep it as a formula, this should be the denominator. It will be common in every bracket. It will be common in every bracket. So I took the sum of this column. Now I will take the sum of sum of next column as well. See, no need to type again the formula. We can take the copy paste. This means it is the sum of it is the sum of K E into V E, K P into V P, K D into V D. This has to be in the numerator. Done. Back. VAC is equal to, you can easily calculate VAC is equal to this 12 divided by 109.9. This is the easiest way to solve for VAC. After doing this, it is good to highlight the final answer. I'll show you once again. I'll show you once again. I'll show you once again. First of all, we have to solve for KE and VE. KPVP, KDVD, KDVD. Done. All the components is done. Next, we will multiply which all? Do comment. Next, we will multiply which all? Do comment, do comment, do comment, do comment. Show me that aggressiveness. It is equal to KE into VE. KE into VE. Now, just copy paste this down. Do take the sum of sum of these two columns equal to sum of total capital, sum of all capital. This will be denominator or numerator for the formula. This sum will be numerator or denominator for the formula. Sum of total capital. This has to be what? This has to be the sum of VE plus VD. It has to be the denominator. It has to be the copy paste to here. This will be the sum of the other. Now, VAC. It is equal to 
न्यूमरेटर ट्वेल्व डिवाइड बाय द टोटल कैपिटल डिनोमिनेटर सो इलेवन पॉइंट नाइन सेवन इफ यू विश यू कुड चेंज इट टू परसेंटेज टू डेसिमल्स ओके सो वी सॉल्व फोर वी सॉल्व फोर ए बिग क्वेश्चन वर्थ इलेवन मार्क्स I'll show you a similar questions that could be done. Similar questions that could be done. We'll be solving the question B now. We are going to solve the question B now. But before that, I I can list you the similar type of question. Do note it down. After the session today, uh, tomorrow early morning and all, you could practice. I'll I'll in the exam kit in the uh, A from exam kit. Sorry, A from A exam kit. Similar type of questions are. Uh, Tin company is a similar, not not tin company. My mistake. Sorry. Two for company is a similar question. Two for company. Do note it. You you can practice. Two for company. Tin up company. Dinla. Dinla company. One more. I I'll write. This is more than enough to practice. uh there's a beautiful question named a match yeah there are four similar type of question i'll i'll once again mark it down a match company then dilla company dilla then tinap then tufa company you could practice from this area okay now please do read Please do read this part. Are you before that? Give me do give me an a review. How the session is going? How the session is going? We got two more days. We got two more days. How the session going? From your review, I'll I'll consider it as very serious. How the session is going? Are you able to follow or not? Are you able to follow or not? Okay. good good always audience always audience motivate the speaker if you are not responding i won't be able to give you my best if you are providing you with the best response best participation i'll give you golden marks okay so now we are focusing on this some theoretical part of the same question do read this other part investment uh uh investment in uh, other facilities and go for read this question b see theoretical questions are the trickiest questions to attempt for as papers like fm but this question is a direct question there are some views expressed by three directors we need to discuss on their views remember many question like this the requirement will say the, there are some opinions expressed by some directors we need to discuss on their view point so we have to read once again from the scenario we have to read once again from the scenario what their opinion is here corfe is looking for finance for some investment they are looking to invest for this investment they require fund how much they are uh, expecting for the investment 25 investment is required 25 so they have to fund 25 million itself the board doesn't want go for long term debt they are not uh, uh, planning to raise debt plus they are also unwilling to go for equity issue so no further debt no equity issue oh my god it's in trouble they are not planning to raise fund through debt long term debt plus they are also not looking to fund through vote uh, equity finance new equity finance this means that they have to find the fund internally from internally they can't go for any external finance so there had some discussion each of the directors said their own opinion regarding how to find out the fund internally so what was the directors a's opinion what was directors a's opinion a suggested that the company does don't have any problem with funding since cash is available in the reserves is 29 million 
29 million is available in the cash reserves. Reserves, as cash. They require only 25 million. So it, it won't be a problem. This was the uh, uh, express uh, the opinion expressed by the director A. Can you check whether do we have uh, 29 million available in the reserves? Could you please check whether 29 million cash available in the cash reserves? Reserves. As cash. Do, do respond yes or no. Do we have, we require 25 million. Do we have 25 million cash in reserves? Yes or no? A few said yes, a few said no. See, reserves is 29 million. Reserves are nothing but accumulated profit. They are profit, accumulated profit. They are not equal to cash. In investment appraisal chapter, initial chapter, there is a topic named profit versus cash flows. Profit, is it equal to cash flow? Do respond, yes or no? Profits and cash flows, are they same? Profits and cash, are they same? No. So this director A's opinion is wrong. We are not, see, we will copy paste the data, director of A. So answer for question B, I'll, I'll type like this. See, minimal content is required, only minimal content. No need to be uh, in a fancy language and all. Even when I'm also writing, there will be some gram grammatical mistakes. Examiner is not going to reduce any marks. Okay. So, question B, uh, I'll start with the director uh, A's opinion. Director A said that Cash is available, available under reserves, under reserves. This is not true since reserves are accumulated profits which is not same as cash balance which is not same as cash cash is available only in cash or bank accounts bank accounts and for and for which company it is corfe company and for corfe company it is only and for corfe company it is only in the cash balance you can see here in the cash balance you can see here it is only 4 million it is only 4 million cash available cash in cash equivalence is just 4 million Cash is available only in either cash or bank account, cash or cash equivalent account. And for coffee company, it is only 4 million. This 4 million won't be sufficient. This 4 million won't be sufficient for funding investment. If it is decided to utilize the whole 4 million for investment, the coffee company will be coffee company will be in serious liquidity trouble. Already we have only 4 million cash balance. If that 4 million is completely used for investment, then definitely the 
uh, corporate company is going to be face a serious uh, uh, liquidity problems. So this this will be my uh, limited answer for director A's opinion. The in total it is worth in total it is worth nine marks. There are three opinions, so I could split I could split the marks into three. So nine divided by three. For each opinion, I can expect a three marks. From this, definitely, for, for sure, I might get three, but definitely two is assured. Two marks is assured. See, we are, my, my opinion, my advice for every ACC aspirants, don't look for a perfect answering. Don't look for perfect answering. But you should attempt everything on a fair basis. Like if you are attempting for nine marks, you should attend for nine marks and try to earn a perfect marks for around six to seven marks. That's fine. We could keep for, we can leave around two to three marks as an uh, uh, conservatism. Only 50 marks is required to pass. If you attend everything, like everything, everything, you will get at least about a two each. You will be end up with two so or six marks. If you are not attend the entire part, you will be ending with only three or four marks max. Okay. Hope you hope we are done with Director A's opinion. Shall we continue? Please do respond. Please do respond. Now we'll read Director B's suggestion. Director B suggests that selling the, their building, they have some uh, non-current asset building, which contains the company's headquarters. Currently, it, it, it is uh, it's a building where their head office is uh, uh, located. Head office is actually employed. And if we sold it, we can raise around 20 million. This will raise a large one of sum and also save on ongoing property management costs. Head office support function would be moved to a number of different locations rendered outside the capital city. Okay. So, Director B suggested to sell off property which was occupied for occupied for head office to to this provide with a lump sum amount of amount of 20 million, 20 million. This is actually, the, it is providing with an in total of 20 million cash and as a lump sum. That's a good sign for funding. So this provide with a lump sum amount of 20 million. The company, uh, the company is the name we should use. The coffee company should consider other factors also, what all other factors we should consider? Number one, relocating, relocating of head office will be having material, material relocating cost. See. Previously, it was in a building, a single building. Now it is relocated into many small, small offices. The entire big office is going to be split into small, small offices. So definitely, there will be a material relocating cost. We need to consider that before selling of the building. Why we are selling off the building? We are, we are trying to sell off the building to raise some money. But after we sold the building, we have to relocate the uh, head office to other parts. Definitely, that will be having some cost. Out of this 20 million, what we raise through the sell of the building, how much is required for reloc as relocation cost? How much money will we are going to lose as relocating? Whether it is 5 million, whether it is 1 million, 2 million, we doesn't know. Before making the, the decision of sell off of property, we need to consider what will be the material relocating cost. And we need to consider. So relocating of head office cost will be having a material relocating cost. This should be considered before sell-off 
plus see after relocating the entire head office is splitted into small small group of members there will be definitely some operational efficiency or operational inefficiency since they are split into separate offices operational efficiency or operational inefficiency do comment do comment since so previously the entire head office was in a single building now the entire team is split into small small group members in different different location so this will lead to operational efficiency or operational inefficiency definitely there will be there will be having some operational inefficiency why because there will be they require some more time for decision making some communication problems so corfe company should also consider should also consider the adverse effect of effecting operational operational efficiency adverse effecting operational efficiency efficiency due to the headquarters or the head office split it into small groups to different to various locations then this is more than enough various locations okay look at here i done my answering part in a single big for a uh, big paragraph or in small small paragraph look at my answer is it in a single paragraph like this or uh, i done it in a small small paragraph it has to be the answering theoretical answering part has to be in a small small paragraph you can see i i made a, a four to five paragraph here while you writing your theoretical part it has to be in a, a small small paragraph okay great plus c these are the key key headings director a so in order to gain the attention of the examiner it is better if you could bold and make it as an under a heading as an heading so that examiner will easily find out in marking okay now we will consider director c i'm not i'm not going to type that entire thing for director c but i'll give you a hint how to answer in order to save the time in order to save the time i'll just give you a hint to that what director c said high dividend has been just paid so they are plan they are the director c is to suggested to reduce the dividend over the next 3 years reduce dividend see what was the dividend per year it, it is the it is here dividend per year is 0.9 using this see how many number of shares was there how many number of shareholders 15 million number of shareholders right see there was 15 million number of shares par value of was 1 so 15 divided by 1 15 itself each shareholder is getting 0.9 equity dividend right the current equity dividend was 0.90 so 0.90 this is the per year dividend this is a per year dividend total dividend per year this is what we are providing so for next 3 years for next 3 years if we cut down the entire dividend we could raise 13.5 multiplied by 3 we could raise 40.5 if we reduce the entire dividend of 0.9 every year we could save a 13.5 million in cash if we stop the dividend for the next 3 years we could gain 40.5 million and tell me is this enough for that investment funding is this enough for that investment funding do come in yes or no 
yes definitely we require only 24 million so this is how i'll start for director c this is how i'll start my answering for director c using some numbers i'll calculate these numbers there are 15 million of shares each share is now paying with 0.9 if you reduce cut the entire dividend there is sufficient money for the investment funding but there's a big but there's a topic named dividend relevancy theory there's a topic named dividend relevancy theory in that theory the amount of dividend and the pattern of dividend amount of dividend and pattern of dividend are relevant if a company just change their pattern of dividend just quickly immediately increase or decrease if the organization is simply changing their pattern it is going to affect some adverse things examples are signaling effect signaling effect another one is clinton effect another one is liquidity issues liquidity issues due to these reasons if you are not aware of aware of these points please learn this is from dividend decision chapter this these are from dividend decision chapter due to this effect we an organization can't uh change their dividend pattern see previously the coffee company was paying high dividend now they are completely reducing it that change in pattern is going to be some adverse effect due to these effects signaling effect clinton effect liquidity issues so this is how i will write my answer for director c's opinion i'll start with like with the numbers every year i, I we could save 13.5 million for next 3 years in total we could save 40.5 but this is a changing the pattern of the dividend due to signaling effect clinton effect and liquidity issues the coffee company can't they can change but if they done that there will be some adverse effect if you are not aware about these effects please learn it how many of you know this signaling effect clinton effect and liquidity issues how many of you know this do come and yes or no do come and yes or no this is a highly probable topic from dividend topic if you are not if you didn't learn this please mark it and learn learn it okay mohammad asif please do learn since this is not the time to teach you this this is the session to practice give you insights to the question practice we won't have enough time to uh, discuss the answer so we superbly done yeah it's a part of dividend decision theory uh, there are three theories in dividend dividend irrelevancy theory by morilani miller second one is traditional theory uh, that is dividend relevancy theory and third one is residual value theory it's just very small chapters very small uh, chapter please learn it okay so we very smoothly with a lot of time we solved a good question do remember i think like this i could solve this question with a more than uh, with less than 30 minutes for sure i could solve this in less than 30 minutes we took more than one hour why because if you are learning at least one question it has to be proper and i already mentioned a similar type of question that could be practice so this is how what i am planning see in these days we can't solve entire topic but at least we could learn a good number of topics and we can make it precise that should be our target having said this i'm stopping this question from business finance module there are two types of important repetitive numerical question one was vac calculation and this can be uh, uh, from uh, as i mentioned dividend growth model and capm plus for capm there could be current ke and this could be an uh, uh de gearing re gearing that will be uh, we will be discussing next section that zedmore question the, the third question in this file but this is only one not only the one question we have, we will be having a second similar question 
spine company it's a similar repetitive question like back spine company if we go through the uh, exam kit what is it if if we go through the exam kit mark this tin company mark this tin company it's asked in june 2018 after solving this spine company you should practice these two questions tin company and left fork company very recent question all these are similar type of question the scenario will be see the company is planning to invest some expansion or something like that question will be the company is planning to some investment expansion so we need to decide whether we go for equity finance or we should fund this using debt finance this is a very similar question so read the requirement evaluate on financial ground no need to consider non financial factors spine should finance the expansion with debt or equity most of the case equity will be equity will be right issue equity finance will be right issue and debt finance will be debt finance will be uh, debenture or bond something like that loan note any decision whatever decision we as a manager we are not shareholders in this module in this uh, paper fm we are not shareholders we are internal decision maker manager whatever decision we are making should be for the best interest of ourselves or for the best interest of shareholder do comment whatever decision we should make for the best interest of ourselves or for the best interest of the shareholder it has to be what what's happening yeah it has to be for the best interest of shareholder okay see rasha is keep on asking a doubt regarding that dividend amount these recordings see all of the recordings of the fm session will be available in our elance youtube channel so if you missed or if you have some confusions regarding that you could rewatch it okay yeah so what was uh, my question yeah uh, we have to do everything for uh, the best interest of our shareholder so take a new sheet take a new sheet and name it as uh, spine company spine company there are three situations okay there are three situation current situation and if finance with equity if finance with equity if equity finance is used if equity finance namely equity wali if we use the equity finance to support the uh, investment there are another situation also if debt finance raised if debt finance raised whatever decision we should do whatever decision we make we should do the best in the stock shareholder we should increase shareholders wealth the decision should increase the shareholders wealth shareholders wealth is measured by the value of the shares they are holding the value of the shares that means price of the shares p0 p0 stands for price of the shares share price share price what is the current share price definitely it will be given in the question see i'll i'll, I'll give you a quick debrief of the question spine company required 15 million to support the uh, uh, investment the 15 million has to be raised Exp through expansion the company is expecting an increase in pbit by 20 percentage whether you go take equity finance or debt finance due to the investment the profit is expected to increase by pbit is expected to increase by 20 percentage this is the current pnl and they are planning whether debt or equity if debt they will go for 8 percentage loan note if they go for equity shares they will go for a right issue 144 right issue at a 20 percent discount the current market price is given the current market price is given okay so the current shareholders wealth per share is 6.25 
due to equity finance, if let us assume if this increased to seven and due to debt finance, this decreased to five. Current is current share price is 6.25. After equity finance, let us assume it, the share price increased to seven. Uh, due to debt finance, assume it is decreased to five. What will be your answer on financial grounds, on financial basis? What will be your recommendation? We should go for equity finance or we should go for debt finance. What will be your comment? Our objective to increase shareholders wealth by increasing their share price. What will be our uh, uh, answer if the share price is 7 and 5 for respectively for equity and debt finance? What will be our recommendation? We will definitely recommend equity finance since the share price is more. That means for this question, these type of questions, three questions I said, spine company, Lefortge company, team company. For all these three questions, we need to calculate the revised share price. Revised share price. We need to calculate revised share price for both of these uh, uh, method. In order to solve this, first of all, we need to forecast. In order to solve this, first of all, we need to forecast the P and L. Forecast P and L. Please do solve with me together. We need to forecast P and L. We need to forecast p &L. The forecast will be based on the current p &L. We need to fill the current p &L first. PBIT, interest, PBT, tax at the rate of, what was the tax rate? Tax at the rate of, it is 30 percentage. Tax is 30 percentage. <laughs> and we'll get profit after tax. After tax. So PBT, PAT, PAT is nothing but the earnings. If there is no preference shares, PAT is earnings. Current data is given. Current data is given. From the question, we can current PBAT is 1340. Current interest is 240. So PBT will be 1340 minus 240. Tax is 30 percentage of PBT and profit after taxes 12800 minus 3840. Please do prepare, please do prepare these format and complete uh, fill out these figures. Solve till this and do comment done. Please do comment done. This is a highly, highly important question. This is a very repeated question. Most of the students just learn only back how to calculate back for business finance question. It's not only back. There are two types of questions could be asked from this module. One is either back. Second one is whether we should finance with equity or debt. So after solving, after uh, full, uh, uh, completing these format, do comment, done. I'll wait. We are trying to fill figures for these two. Here, what will the PBAT? Whether we finance through, whether we finance through equity or debt, due to the expansion, the PBIT is expected to increase by what percentage? The PBA, the current PBIT is expected to increase by what percentage? Do comment. Do comment. The PBIT is expected to increase by what percentage? 20 percentage, right? So here, 13040 multiplied by 1.2. Why 1.2? If we multiply by 1, we will get the same answer. 13, 13, 0, 4, 0, multiply 1, we will get the same answer. I need to increase 20 percentage more. 20 percent means 20 by 100, which is 0. 0.2. So it's not only multiply by 1, multiply 1.2. If it increased by 30 percentage, multiply by 1.3. If it increased by 10 percentage, multiply by 1.1. That's it. So in both cases, this will be the same. In both cases, this will be the same. Okay. The PBIT will be same. The PBIT will be same. Is it fine? Is it fine? Please do come and use to know quickly. Is it fine? Any response from everyone? I'm I'm a I'm a, a person like I'm a tutor, like I won't continue without getting a response from my students. 
Sibila, you require uh, one, one more explanation. See, whether we take equity finance or whether we take debt finance, the PBIT, the scenario said the PBIT is expected to increase by 20 percentage. So the PBIT is 1340. It's multiplied in order to increase by 20 percent, multiply by 1.2. Okay. Now, if we raise equity finance or debt finance, the interest will increase in which finance? The interest will increase if we go for equity finance or debt finance. What's your answer? The in equity, sorry, the interest will increase if we go for debt finance. If we go for equity finance, the current interest will be what? If we go for equity finance, the current interest will be what? It, it is same or different. If we go for equity finance, if we go for equity finance, the current interest will be same. So we can write 240 here. We can type 240 here, same. But if we for if we go for debt finance, the 240 will be increased, not only 240, 240 plus. How much money we require for funding? How many millions we require for funding? We require 15 million. We are solving in thousand. 15 million means in thousands, since the figures are in thousand, 15 million means it is 15,000. So we require 15,000 through debt finance. And we are taking a loan note worth 8 percentage interest. It is charging 8 percent interest. So our interest will increase by 8 percentage of 15,000. So the interest will increase by 15,000 into 8 percentage. 15,000 multiplied by 8 percentage. So the interest will rise up. It is 1,440. Now we will get PBT. PBT means PBIT minus interest. PBIT minus interest, it is uh, PBT. I'll, I'll keep some space in order to get a good view of this. Yeah. Now we are left with tax. Now we are left with tax. So tax is equal to 30 percentage of tax is equal to 30 percentage of profit before tax. The same is applicable here. Same is applicable here. 30 percentage of tax. Now we will get earnings. Earnings is equal to PBT minus tax. PBT minus tax. We got earnings. Okay. Please solve till this point. This question is going to get getting over. Question is going to over now. Within two, three steps, it will be over. But I want to make sure that you are able to follow me. Please do respond then after solving this. Do remember, this is a very repetitive question. Definitely, there's a high chance of th these type of questions getting the exam. You will remember me. Definitely, you are going to remember me. Okay, I'll wait. We need to calculate share price. We need to calculate share price. Please do learn a formula. It's from business valuation topic. Please do learn a formula. Share price is equal to EPS into PE ratio. EPS into PE ratio. This is a formula. Actually, while I'm teaching, I'll explain the uh, concept behind this formula. But at this point, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we don't have sufficient time for that. So please learn this. Share price is equal to EPS into PE ratio. So we have earnings now. We have earnings now. In each situation, we have earnings. In order to calculate the share price, first we need to calculate earnings per share. How we will calculate earnings per share using earnings? To calculate earnings per share, we have to divide it by what? To calculate earnings per share, the earnings should be divided with work. Do comment. The earnings has to be divided with work. 
number of shares, right? Number of shares, good. Number of shares. So we require number of shares now. Next we require is number of shares. So I'll keep it a line here in order to get that picture. We already calculated after tax earnings. Now I'll go for number of shares. Number of shares. What is the current number of shares? As we had done earlier for the back question, we can calculate from balance sheet. Oh, it is directly given. In this question, it is directly given. Spine company has, it said here, Spine company has 12 million number of shares. Is there any dollar sign in front of this number? Is there any dollar sign? No. If at all they said dollar 12 million, then it is value. If there is no dollar sign in between, in, in, in front of it, that means it is numbers. So 12 is 12 million numbers. So currently we have 12 million numbers since we are doing it thousands. See, all the figures we used thousands. So the numbers also has to be in thousand, 12,000. So the current EPS, current EPS, current EPS is equal to earnings divided by number of shares. <coughs> current EPS is earnings divided by number of shares. Earnings divided by number of shares. So current EPS is 0.74. Now, the number of shares will increase. The number of shares will increase if we go for equity finance or if we go for debt finance. The number of shares will increase only if we go for dash finance. What finance? Do comment. Whether it is equity finance or debt finance. The number of shares will increase only for equity finance, right? So the number of shares here, it will be 12,000. <coughs> for debt finance, the number of shares will be 12,000 same as previous for debt finance. Look at here. Uh, previously, interest been increased here. For debt finance, increased, increased. Interest has been increased. But for equity finance, no change in uh, interest. But for number of shares, we need to calculate new number of shares. So 12,000 is already there. Plus, there are some new right issue, right? Right issue. This will be the total number of shares then. What was the ratio for right issue? From the question, could you please speak? What is the ratio for the right issue? Could you please speak from the question? Every For every four shares, we have to issue new one share. For every four shares, we have to issue one more new shares. So the new right issue will be in brackets. In brackets, previously we had 12,004. 12,000 uh, number of shares. Previously we had 12,000 number of shares. For each four, I have to issue one share means the fraction will be one by four. This much number of shares will be increased. 12,000 into 1 by 4. This much number of shares will be increased due to right issue. Is it okay? That means 3,000 number of shares will be increased. Dilu, I didn't get your doubt. Could you please uh, unmute and ask? Sir, in exam, dollar thousand for doing like this, I didn't get that. Unmute the chocho. You can ask in Malayalam if you're not uh, well versed with English. Don't be, uh, uh, yeah, please. In the other chocha, I don't know. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, we can do whether it is in millions or we can do it in thousands. But keep it in mind, if you are doing in thousand, everything has to be in thousand. If you started with millions, then everything has to be in millions. But for section A and B, for section A and B, the examiner will correctly say whether you have to round it off in two decimal, whether you have to solve in thousand, whether you have to solve in millions. For that question, section A and B, we have to follow the same. Otherwise, it's up to you. You can do it in million, thousands. But do remember, if you start with thousand, the entire question has to be in thousands. Okay. Uh, please, please do confirm. Are you able to uh, uh, follow this? The number of shares will be 12,000 plus 12,000 in a 1 by 4. That means 3,000. In total, it is 15,000. Is it okay for you? The number of shares will be this much. The number of 
shares will be this much. Yes? Yeah. So easily we could calculate the EPS now. EPS is equal to earnings divided by number of shares. We are supposed to complete this question. We are going to complete this. We got the EPS now. See, for decision making, we require share price, right? Share price. We require share price, revised share price. To calculate the share price, what was the formula? What was the formula? EPS into EPS into PE ratio. We have EPS. For each case, we have EPS. Now we require what ratio? Now we require what ratio? PE ratio. PE ratio means market price and EPS. The relationship between, it's a relationship between EPS and market price. Do we know the current, can we calculate the current PE ratio? We know the current share price and we know the current EPS. From this, for this question, are we able to calculate the current PE ratio? Could you please comment? For this question, are we able to calculate the relationship between price and EPS? Yes. See, the current PE ratio, I'm right, calculating PE ratio here. PE ratio. The current PE ratio. What was the current share price? What was the current share price from the question? What was the current share price from the question? It is 6.25. 6.25. Divided by current EPS is 0.74. So PE ratio is 8.37 times. 8.37 times. See, most of the question, most of the question, like I said, similar question was, previously I said, similar question was Lefourge. You can see here uh, for the Lefourge question, you can see Lefourge's current PE ratio is 11 times. This, this is not the... Our question is another question, similar type of question. Lefourge's PE ratio is 11 times. And it is assumed that it remains, it remains what? The current relationship with price and earnings ratio is assumed to be what? It is assumed to be? Please do respond. The relationship of the current PE ratio is assumed to be unchanged. Whether we go for equity debt, whether we go for right issue or whether we go for low note, the current PE ratio is assumed to be remain same. So, I'll show you another question. This was left game. We, we are solving fine. There's another question named team company. There's another question named team company. Team company. Is it here? Yeah. This question also will be similar type. Yeah. Look at here. The current P ratio for the tin company is given. 12.5. We will assume it is same. For spine company, for spine, spine company, current P ratio was not given. That's why we calculated P ratio first. Now we'll write it is assume that. PE ratio remains unchanged regardless of or, or uh, unchanged whether whether equity finance or debt finance used. So we'll Right, like this is equal to the same. Don't copy paste, just equal to the same here and equal to the same here. Now we have EPS and PE ratio. What was the formula? Please do learn if you are not learned this for business valuation. PE ratio is equal to EPS into PE ratio. We have EPS and we have PE ratio. So share price. Share price is equal to share price is equal to EPS into PE ratio. Share price is equal to EPS into PE ratio. EPS into PE ratio. Okay. 
So now looking at the figure, hope you are able to follow. This is worth around nine marks. Now we need to comment on financial basis. Tell me, current share price is six point two five. If we go for equity finance, what is happening for shareholder level? Is it increasing or decreasing? If we go for equity finance, there shareholders will this going to increase or decrease? It is going to decrease. The shareholders will be facing capital value loss. So we will recommend for debt finance. The recommendation will be red, uh, debt finance. Since the shareholders will, the recommendation will be like this. I'll, I'll give you a small, small idea on how to write this. Okay, small idea on how to write this. Uh, my recommendation. Recommendation. Since shareholders' wealth is increased in debt finance, it is financially recommended. It is financially recommended. If you felt that there is some more more marks for the comment, you could continue this. But, but debt finance comes with I... debt finance comes with more financial risk due to increase in proportionate proportionate of debt in capital sector. Hope you guys know that. Hope you guys capital sector. Capital sector means the relationship between capital sector means it is the relationship between equity finance and debt finance. When the debt finance increases, as the debt finance increases, financial risk will increase or decrease. Do comment. As debt finance increases in the capital structure, financial risk increases or decreases. It will increase, right? So, but we, we recommend it. See, this is the only thing required for this question. For a spine company, they only said for only on financial ground. But for Lefogi and other team question, they are asking for more comment. The more comment will be based on the financial risk. The best financially best is debt but we need to consider the increase in financial risk due to increase in more proportionate proportionate of debt finance and capital structure if this increase in financial risk if this increase in financial risk is well under tolerable level Please do learn this. Any risk question, you, you can end the comment like this. Any risk question, you could end comment like this. If the increase in risk is well under tolerable level of shareholders' risk, risk appetite. See, there was an increase in financial risk. If this is Above that, if this is above the tolerable level of shareholders' risk appetite, we can't accept this. If this is well under, well under tolerable level of shareholder risk appetite, then the debt finance would be continued. Or else the organization the organization should consider other source of finance, other sources of finance. Okay. See, once again, I'm I'm uh, reminding you guys for this question. This is it is purely based on financial recommendation. But a similar question like Lefourge and Tim Company, it requires a further more comment. The comment is worth three or four marks. So in order to gain a further mark, we should 
consider the increase in financial risk and we can in the comment like in this manner if the financial risk is well under the tolerable level of uh, uh, shareholders risk appetite risk level then it is financially acceptable then it is acceptable or else we could uh, we the organization should consider other source of finance okay the other two theoretical question is comparatively easy question uh, for uh, this spine company the other two theoretical question is easy what it is spine company other two explain the relationship between systematic risk and unsystematic risk this is a topic from capm and portfolio theory and discuss the assumptions made by the capm model hope you guys have already have this file at the end of this file at the end of this file it's in uh, page number 33 pdf page number 33 i made some assumption you need to write it down these figures if you list these you will be awarded only small marks not only this you should comment about this you should explain briefly in order to get how many marks it is five marks if you just less three these three you will get only two marks you need to explain this so having said this i am going to stop today's session it's almost 10 okay so we'll we'll have a quick chat after this let me stop this recording